a very common problem in every but it is it is the it is the only the 25 percent of the patient they have a cardiac problem if they comes to a primary physician with chest pain they have a non-cardiac chest pain so it is very important the first thing that we our primary physician or non-diabetic population the 50 percent of them they do not have any symptoms or clinical sign only they may have some of the risk factor patient they have a risk factor for the coronary artery disease but it is very important to know the at least basic of uh, some of the ECGs. Many uh, times the ECG may be normal in 15 of the patient. So symptom is very important. 85% of the patient they may have a changes in the ECG even they have a complete occlusion of the coronary artery which is responsible for the sudden cardiac death and migraine infarction. Many times a primary physician say clues on the basis of uh, we can recognize the patient may go into complete occlusion of the coronary artery disease. So this is uh, one normal ECG. In the normal ECG, the pointer pointer. In the normal ECG. In other leads also, if you see any variation, this is a standard normal ECG. If this is the baseline, if there is something is depression over the patient may have a migraine function. So for a primary physician, it is very important on the basis of symptom and on the basis of ECG. So what are the symptoms which highly specific migraine function? It is it is not only pain very important if patient comes to you with a chest heaviness chest discomfort that is more important as come to the pain many times they just started a retrosternal chest discomfort and apart from that the very important for a primary physician if it is a intermittent it is not continuous in character if it is it comes there are some aggravating factor many patient Whenever they walk, they started chest discomfort. Just the just their description rather than pain. And definitely, once there is a hundred percent occlusion of the coronary artery, the the patient may have sustained severe excruciating chest pain. Classically, it related to the arms, it may relate to the back. Also, the diaphoresis. There are a lot of uh, perspiration. And the one thing the when patient say. That is an impending doom of death. That is also a very important symptom. When patient himself thinks he is going to die, impending doom of death, that is also very important. A patient thinks that he is going to die, then it is also a very important symptom. So it is there are changes which are typical of a migraine infarction. There are some of the other conditions where you can get a ST elevation. That, that is very important. So ST elevation, we, uh, we are facing many patients in our uh, medical ICC also. Uh, like a patient who is suffering from some poisoning, like a sulfur spine, where you can get a ST elevation. Involvement of the pericardium, that also suggests ST elevation. So ST elevation doesn't mean. So serial ECG, if a person comes to you with a chest pain, if you record a serial ECG, and if there is a further uh, elevation in the subsequent ECG that means a typical symptom it must be a retrosternal related with the arm back to the jaw associated with perspiration so it is very important to diagnose a migraine infarction because the time is very important if the if you miss the diagnosis there are some the study in the western world 2% of the primary physician they are missing acute migraine infarction but, and if we record a serial ECG, we cannot miss. 
but when it crosses, when the persistent occlusion of the coronary artery beyond two hours or three hours, there is a possibility of 100% myocardial damage. Once it is damaged, even if we open the artery, we, can re we cannot revive the muscles. If we are delayed to giving a pharmacoinvasive therapy, that is terms used when we are opening the artery by various pharmacological measures. The important is the thrombolytic therapy. Almost more than 50% of the artery can be opened with these thrombolytic agents. But if patient comes in a three to six hour, if we open with the help of angioplasty, we can save the muscle. Muscle is the pump. So it is very important. Even if patient comes after 12 hours or after 24 hours, even if we are doing a revascularization therapy, it is no issue because already the muscle is lost. Many times we are seeing in many in our clinical practice, if we are performing angioplasty, we are opening the artery after the total damage of that muscle which are supplied by the coronary artery is, is useless. Until and this, if there are the associate vessels which are partially closed, there are some of the vessels, they are the collaterals which can supply after giving a good coronary flow. So in the acute phase, time is very important because timely if we open the coronary artery, we save not the life of the patient, but muscles. So now we coming to the, what are the other conditions? So 75% of the patient, they comes to you with a chest pain, maybe of a non-cardiac. 25% of the patient, they have a myocardial infarction or acute coronary syndrome. So you can see in this picture, how to differentiate between different causes of the chest pain and there are some of the cases and we are also going to discuss about the non papa there are some of the diseases which it is a mnemonics for the pericarditis acute coronary syndrome a p stand for pneumothorax another p is pulmonary embolism and and stand for aneurysm so for it is very easy so one which already we discussed about that is acute coronary syndrome on the basis of ECG. Many times if you are not getting a structural damage by echocardiography, after ninth beat, there are changes in the echocardiogram. Because there is no movement of the left ventricle that suggests even the ECG is normal, but typical symptom with akinesia or hypokinesia of left ventricle wall that suggests the failure, sudden onset of dyspnea in a, in a surgical setup, there is a possibility of pulmonary embolism. One more life threatening situation where they may have a high mortality in spite of surgery. 20% of the patient they die in spite of surgery. That is, we must uh, diagnose promptly. Then, esophageal rupture, like in a Barrett's esophagus. If then pneumothorax is very important which commonly we face in our ward and pericardial. These are the things which required a prompt treatment should not be missed. So how to approach if a patient comes to you? We do not know what could be the cause. What are the things that to be performed? As already pointed out, the history is very important. If it is very typical history of a migraine infarction, we are getting a ECG changes. If we perform echocardiogram, then there is no difficulty. But if it is not there, then we have to rule out the other causes. So ECG, stress test, stress test, especially if a patient having a risk factor for migraine infarction. In that, we ask, we subject for a treadmill test. Especially if diabetic patient crosses the age of 40 years, because 50% of the diabetic patient, they have an underlying coronary artery disease. So this is the test by which we can provoke the myocardial ischemia. We are subjecting the patient for underlying ischemia. Many times we are not getting any changes in the ECG, but in the resting ECG, if you are not getting a changes, 
definitely on uh, treadmill test the changes will come so that is also very important then uh, in if the cath lab is present the st elevated mi another is a non st elevated mi it is also a equal risk factor for sudden cardiac these are the biochemical marker which are more specific as compared to the cpk so these are the some of the biomarker uh, biomarker which revealed underlying coronary artery disease if the if everything is normal then we must go for evaluating the non cardiac uh, chest pain so very important the, the commonest cause of chest pain 35% of the patient they may have a esophageal or they may disease of the pericardium that is comes around 4% very less aortic dissection only seen in the 1% of the population who develop chest pain so commonest is is the gastroesophageal diseases and how to evaluate it is very important so important point non cardiac chest pain are more so goes gastrointestinal causes it may be musculoskeletal pain it may be respiratory or it may be a psychosomatic there is a one scope is in male the coronary artery disease may be seen in the youngest especially in a diabetic even a 20 year old male or 25 year old male may have a acute coronary syndrome while in female because of the estrogen the estrogen is the hormone which is having a cardiac palpation means it may be cardiac patient suspect the heart disease is the cause the themselves so these are the marble heart score and if it is more than 4 to 5 the risk is very high 65% they may have a coronary artery disease so there are various uh, distinguishing features which uh, suggest the patient may have a coronary artery disease so number one condition the migraine infarction so location of the it is not migraine so the location is very important apart from that this already pointed out the pain of a migraine infarction exert on ex so there are some aggravating factors so important aggravating factor is exertion apart from that we must ask for the radiation if it is radiating to the arm then it may be migraine infarction then another very important respiratory disease comes as a medical emergency is the pneumothorax in pneumothorax the pain is lateral it is not retrosternal it is it is over the side where the patient develop pneumothorax so lateral pain is a pneumothorax patient may comes with a diaphoresis they may have a tachycardia very severe pain some of the patient they may have a hypotension but localization is very important either it may be left side or it may be right side pain of pericarditis it is a sort of a pleuritis always ask whether it is aggravated on taking deep inspiration or it brought up by the cough so if it is there it is a pericarditis again it may be seen over the whole of the precon if it is with a deep inspiration relieved on held expiration it is a pain of pericarditis patient of a pulmonary embolism there is a sudden on patient they may have a, may comes with a pain in the interscapular region over the back if it is it is in the ascending aorta the pain may be a retrosternal and it is very severe it is a boring it is a knife like this some they may stab injury just like so it goes through and through so aortic dissection so what are the points to be remember year old male comes to you with a chest pain so patient is having a history of diabetes so one of the risk factor it is a hypertension already a risk factor for coronary artery disease he present to the emergency department and one day history of retrosternal chest pain the chest pain begin while he had been resting and continue to worsen over a next few hour he describe it as a sharp pain that is moderate in intensity with radiation to his right shoulder and neck the pain worsen when it is lying down with any deep inspiration but it is relieved by bending forward and he denies having any shortness of breath or palpitation so he is not having a dyspnea 
the pain which increase on deep inspiration get relieved on held expiration so it the pain is having a associate uh, relation with the respiration a camel hood appearance in myocardial infarction while in patient of acute pericarditis the classically if you see the st elevation pericarditis so diagnosis is based on the ecg apart from the there are some of the changes which can differentiate one is year old male present to the hospital with dull precordial and retrocess chest pain begin acutely with a tearing sensation lasted for 3 days he said that during this period he has been unable to get comfortable the intensity of the pain increases during inspiration again could be the possibility so there is a more likely we are seeing the shadow of early to the rupture of the aorta and patient suddenly comes in the emergency ct scan and mri even we cannot diagnose on the basis of ecg so only the, there are various types of aortic dissection if there is only the type 1 when there are proximal part of the aorta means ascending aorta arch of the aorta and descending aorta is involved it is a it is a type a the, there are and in the b it is only if it is involving the distal part of the aorta so these are the sites in the aorta the patient may comes to you with a, in a pulseless state there is a, some patient they may develop hemiplegia because hypertensive emergency so immediately we must start with the nitroglycerin or nitroprusside the other drugs which are very potent is the calcium channel blocker or ac inhibitor or beta blocker that can be promptly uh, reduce the blood pressure from the one especially if there is a t4 dermatomes are involved so typically the the pain is a neuritic chest pain and it is going back so many times then uh, esophageal pain many patient they have a esophageal spasm just after taking a spicy meal such and that we have to see peptic ulcer disease typically after 2 hours of taking heavy ily meal the patient comes to you with the pain patient of pancreatitis patient may comes with the epigastric discomfort which all same with the exertion it is always at rest they may have insomnia so there are so many vague symptom which suggest the patient may have a psychiatric disorder very low so then we can see the esophageal manometer in this patient and treatment is proton pump inhibitor pulmonary embolism is very important the very important ecg changes and always a question in mcqs for pg exam or in any qs ki what 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 are the changes so very important the ace wave in lead 1 deep q in lead 3 and inverted t this is classical but commonest is the sinus tachycardia in pulmonary embolism if a patient post operatively develop tachycardia even we are not getting any changes except sinus tachycardia we can suspect after a fracture of fish after a prolonged bed return and patient develop dyspnea there is a great possibility so it is a classical ecg